Sammy Miller. What a difference a year makes. Last year, around this time, it was, you know, 115 degrees and we're baking out here. Uh, morning temps, like right now, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning. Morning temps were in the high 90s. Um, maybe even over 100 degrees by this time. Well, today, it's in the 70s. We've had uh, a couple of days of rain. And it's been really, really a great relief from the summer heat. We did have a very warm June, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't three months of heat. It was one. And so we've had a proper monsoon this year. And uh, we've gotten a fair amount of rain. Not a huge amount, but definitely a big relief from the heat. But we do have high humidity because of it. So today, I wanted to talk about the plastic uh, fence netting fence that we have. We've got three of them. They come from Premier One, uh, from Premier One Fencing. And there are, um, this has become a very common thing in the homesteading community as a way to manage animals. And I think it warrants a, a pretty detailed look at what these fences are, how they kind of, how they work and all of that. So a lot of people promote these um, on their channel, and if you, you know, if you follow through, you can get a 10% discount from their one. Well, I don't have any discount. I paid full price for these. I've used them, you know, for a fair amount of time now. So I can give you an honest review of my thoughts of that, some words of caution, and maybe some advice. Maybe I'll save you some hassle. So let's go take a look at them. Let's talk about what we have. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll get into the details and let you know what kind of what we think of them. Good morning, turkeys. We're trying to get a gobble out there. So clearly the fence is not working for these guys. They obviously are uh, pretty big birds and they can just fly right over it. This, the one that we're using for the birds out here is the first one that we got. And this one is a 48 inch shock or not. I know, terrible name, but it is what it is. So we've had this one for, uh, let's see, it would be two years. And so we have a good idea of how they hold up and all of that. Now it is 48 inches, so it's very hard to get over. Um, and if you do, you're gonna end up with some problems. So first of all, let's take a look at the fence. So this fence is not electrified right now, but it has, let's see if we can get a, there we go. So it has um, wire strands in here that provide the electrical uh, current so that, you know, you can electrify it. And all of the horizontal strands are electrified. The vertical ones are not. So you can actually like pull it down or move it while the fence is electrified and then this fence has a netting on the on the for about a foot on the bottom so this is like a just a, a square plastic netting you can get an idea of the size the idea is that little chicks won't be able to go through the bottom well honestly <laughs> it maybe it slows them down but you know if you have any kind of grass the grass here is about two inches tall and so they would just be sliding right underneath there for really small chicks once they get a little bit bigger they can't go uh well no they can usually still go underneath but what they actually do is just jump up into this area and come right through those spaces the turkeys did it the uh the chickens did it basically these birds have been inside this fence since they were you know a couple weeks old we put them in this enclosure. We've had them in here. And, uh, oh, there you go. Young turkey strutting for us. Two of them. So we've had them inside this fence for that whole time. Um, and the turkeys just fly over it with complete disregard. They fly in and out. And so it actually, um, even though they fly over it, it works pretty well. The chickens stay inside. And, um, you know, it keeps them safe, I think helps to protect them we for for this in this case we do electrify it periodically um but it's not actually electrified every night okay now one of the big big deals about these fences is moving them 
So if you look at the number of posts, you know, there's, uh, I should have counted it before I made the video, but there's like 15 panels, give or take, something like that. This fence is quite heavy, and it's almost too heavy for one person to carry and, you know, pull up or install. It's, it's quite difficult to, to do that. And so what we often do is move the coop forward, and then we'll start at this corner. We'll pull up this one, and we'll move one panel the whole way around. And so this side would stay in place, and the front would get new grass. And we typically do that for these birds. We're doing it once a day right now because the grass is pretty good, and uh, we don't have to go too fast. So that's how we use it. I would say, you know, other than the weight, like having to move the, the thing, it works pretty well. Now, as far as durability, let's look at a couple of issues that we have. So our ground is pretty hard, and I would say our fence gets used pretty hard. I'm not sure what tore the, the wires here, but or the, the poly, but we do have some torn fencing there. And then uh, if you look here, so we have the double spike. And what they mean by that is that there are two spikes. But, and, and, and that means you can like put your foot on here to push it into the ground. And I, we really like that. That's a, I think it's a very good idea. The problem is if you have hard ground, that second spike is going to bend. And so over time, it's just going to break off anyway. Uh, it's kind of a frustration to me, but... It definitely makes it a little easier to use the fence and you can kind of get an idea on this one of the consequences of bending it to get over it so there's one issue some of the spikes on this fence are broken off but most of them have actually held up pretty well uh, partly because we learned to respect it after a while but here we do have a broken one so you can see that this just snapped off and I think the cows did this, actually. The, the cows walked over it a couple of times. Uh, they, don't, they don't respect it very much. So we typically have to put up... They'll respect a single strand of electric fence right there. But they'll just walk right through this. Very frustrating. So, if you'll notice here, we have a second post here. And they kind of um, advertise this with the fence. Now, these posts are, are stronger, and in this case, it's kind of replacing the broken one, um, and they, they'll help to keep the fence up. So, this is typically how ours looks. You know, it doesn't sag too much. Um, you can put those bigger posts in the corners to help keep it from sagging. But, it, it you know, we've been doing this for two years. It actually takes a lot of practice and skill to put up a good fence. Now, if we were to electrify this right now, it would probably short out enough that it would do very little for predators. And so one of the things that we did is disconnect the bottom um, wire. I'm trying not to freak out this turkey. So the, one of the bottom wires here is disconnected because it's going to contact grass all the time. The rest of these are all electrified and so you can by cutting some wires you can actually um, you know determine how much you want to electrify it or not and then here's the uh, here's the end of the fence and so this this creates the electrical circuit and then if we electrify it we clip onto this so I, w I would say even with our relatively short grass electrifying this is only moderately successful um, we have been able to train the dog and the goats by electrifying it. But like I said, for some reason, the cows um, just don't care. So now we've looked at this one. This is the 48 inch shock or not poultry fence. Let's quickly take a look at one of our other fences. Now here we've got two different fences. One is for the goats and you can see those panels are much or the, the openings in the fence are much larger. And then here we have a 42 inch fence. So that one is currently electrified for the goats and this one is not. This is the one that we now use for our main, maybe this is electrified. This is what we use for our main, um, our main block, right? 
So because it's 42 inches, the panels are spaced further apart. It's actually much, much easier to move, but it's also pretty big. It makes a big circle. And so we actually have definitely had more success with this one than we have some of the others. Uh, we typically also don't electrify this other than to remind Luna and maybe some some other animals that, hey, respect the fence. But our, our birds actually respect it very nicely. They, do, they don't go over this or through it or anything. They will occasionally, if we don't install it well, uh, they'll go underneath or something like that. But they really respect it. Now, when we got the goats... Well, when we were talking about goats, we were concerned because, I, I mean, goats have a well-deserved reputation of being very difficult to control with fencing. And so we were getting the goats from someone who essentially has, you know, physical fences that are five or six feet high and no climb netting and things like that to keep the goats contained. Well, we don't have that and we actually don't want to build it. So we were very concerned, but we've had pretty good success with our other animals and I like to say for the cows you know when we get new steers they're gonna run through the electric fence about three times before they say okay that's enough I don't like that I'm gonna respect that line until the day I leave this farm <laughs> and so we have been very very pleased the goats actually learn to respect it they don't touch it anymore and so now um, they, they stay in there, they're very good about it, and I would say that our fencing there is a big success. So, overall, these fences are fairly expensive, you know, $150 roughly for that one. I think the, the black shock or not, the 48-inch one, I think that was over $200. You can look up the prices, I don't need to give you the prices, but the rough number is over $200 for that. And so... We've got a gobble out from Big Blue. You can go to Premier One, and I'll put a link in the description of uh, one of the fences. You know, you can go through there and browse it. They have all kinds of them. I would say a couple of things that you'll want to keep in mind. The lighter you can go, the better, right? So if you can control your poultry with that one, I would highly recommend it because that one is so much easier to move than this one or the, the black one. You know, so the more panels you have, the closer the, uh, the smaller the, the opening size is on the fencing, the heavier it's going to be. That weight, is a, that weight is a big deal. Not too happy with the rooster right now. That's very annoying. He's a good rooster, though. <laughs> so, here's the thing. They're relatively cheap, right? The cost of building... Uh, permanent fencing around our farm to contain chickens or goats would be really, really high. And it would be a lot of work. We were able to come and start with animals just like that. You know, the, the fence comes in three days in the mail and you're ready to go. And so, in general, I think it's an excellent tool, but it has its limitations. So we discussed, you know, shorting out um, we discussed, you know, the, the post breaking and things like that, the access issues, but in general, it's really uh, quite a useful tool for a homestead. By not having these fences, we can really put the animals exactly where we want them in a limited area and, you know, provide fertilizer or weed control as needed in a very focused kind of way. We can put them in an area where we can... Um, you know, give them extra feed or give them less, depending what we're trying to do. And even though, in general, we kind of hate moving these fences, I had to move all three of them last evening, it's a lot of work. Like, it might take an hour or two to move a significant number of fences. And so this is something to keep in mind. It's not going to solve all your issues. It'll just create new ones. But if it's used correctly, you know... It, it really gives you a great management tool for your animals and for your, for your grass. So I don't regret going to a system like this. I think it works quite well. Uh, I wish there were something better, but there, there just aren't really many alternatives other than building permanent fences. And I think that's why people go to that. 
I would like to build more permanent fences. You know, if we had a permanent fence around what we call the orchard right here, it would be a big, big help. And especially if it's goat and chicken poop, that would be the goal. We would actually want to be able to, to keep them in. So, yes, I would recommend it, but proceed with caution. Keep in mind, as, as I've mentioned, keep in mind the limitations and the frustrations that you're going to have. But, in general, I think, I think it's a good thing. I don't have a discount code to offer you or anything like that, but they are available if you, I don't know, watch the right channel or something like that. Since we're doing honest product reviews, I don't have one. I paid full price, and I gave you my honest opinion. Um, definitely proceed with caution, but it's a great tool. It really is. So I'm signing off. Saving Miller out.